everything with regards to his success is based on his end. What does this mean? That today, what we are today, tomorrow there's no guarantee that we will be the same. There's no guarantee. Today we might be very righteous, upright individuals, maybe good status, maybe we've got respect, we're respectful, maybe we're religious, deendar, maybe we're pious, maybe we pray to hajjud, maybe we do dhikr, and maybe we're abideen, and maybe we're dhakirin, maybe we've got all good qualities. This might be our situation today, but there's no guarantee it will stay like that. This condition, your condition right now, will it benefit you or not? Ultimately. This situation that you're in now, all the maqam you have, the status, your practice, your piety, etc., will it succeed or not afterwards? So on this, Allah's Nabi wasallam stated that there's no guarantee that you will remain constant, that what you are today, yes, individually, we each of us need to think about it. Not, don't think about other people, think about yourself. Yourself, that me, I, I shouldn't think that today I'm prostrating, today I'm practicing, today I'm remembering Allah. The real success is at the end. That when you are passing away from this world, will you be in that same position or not? This is the important factor to think about. The real success is this. That this point with this iman, constant iman, a person, that when you will you die with that iman tomorrow or not? With that faith, with that belief. This is the real factor. And there's no guarantee for that. Yes, that will be the real test that when you leave this world in a khair, good way, reciting kalima shahada with complete iman, with good deeds, with strong faith, and you are then transferred to the court of Allah. That's the real success at that time. So this is a very big message that the human being, his life, you know, it continues continues uh, through effort and struggle. That's the definition of life. Every moment, every hour, the human being should just be making effort and struggle and he should be concerned for his hereafter. Every moment, every hour. So fikri akhira, concern for the hereafter. If you're lazy on this for just a moment, then in reality, it might be that you will then slip up and fall away from your destination and you could fail. You could fail. So to protect this conclusion is a big struggle. That the human being constantly, he keeps his condition intact and he presents himself in a good way to Allah. Why? Because you know our heart, this is where everything connects to the heart of the human being. All iman, the levels of iman, the emotions of belief, they're all connected to the qalb, the heart. Remember this point. Remember this point. All of your emotions, your strong faith and iman is all related to the heart. Everything comes to the heart. If the qalb in Arabic is a changeable thing. The, the qalb, the heart, is fluctuating. That's the actual Arabic meaning, is the qalb is an organ, piece of flesh, can fluctuate. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. You will feel yourself in your personal life. Sometimes you feel good, sometimes you're strong, sometimes you feel down or miserable, you won't feel like practicing. Sometimes you will feel passionately for practicing. So every moment the heart is fluctuating. It's up and down, it's changeable. It doesn't stay constant in the same state. Today, you prayed Salah, you enjoyed it, you felt really strong, you think, oh, I'm rightful, and I'm the rightful owner of paradise. And after some time, the same heart, you will feel that the emotions change for the human being, the same person. So the real success, the real message here that the Prophet ﷺ has told us in this hadith, and what is that? That your qalb, your heart, 
If you can maintain your heart, if you can control your heart, look after your heart properly and service it, then this heart will take you to the conclusion that when you're dying, you will die in a good way. But those people who are negligent of their qalb, the ghafilin, then it's a dangerous situation for those people who don't look after their heart. And they can slip up any time in life and fall down. So with, with regards to this, that's why a person's, you know, his manners and akhlaq, the, the disease, the sicknesses we have inside, one of them is kibar. When a person thinks, I'll give you an example. For example, when you are praying salah, if Allah allows you to follow sunnah, you're trying to leave the sins, you're aware of good and bad, then alongside that, then there's another danger that arises. That that person, he starts to look down at other people. He starts to belittle other people. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah? When a person's practicing, then after practice starts, this second issue comes up. We need to be careful that if Allah's giving you status, is saving you from sin, saving you from wrong, and he's making you do good actions, at that time, this point we need to be very careful of. This emotion, this thinking, this mindset, this waswasa, negative thought that is born inside a person. Oh, I'm better than this person. Oh, even if you aren't, but your actions demonstrate you think you are better than that person. You'll look down on the person, you'll treat him in a lower way. One person starts to pray salah, he's practicing. The person who doesn't pray salah, maybe does some dirty actions. It's regular in our society. Nobody will even look at him twice. The sinful person. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, he's dirty, impure, let's not talk to him. You won't even give him a lift in your car. Oh, he'll smell of alcohol from his mouth. Why should I give him a lift? We think like this, isn't it? Yeah? Every man will dislike that person. Oh, I don't want to be sat next to him. They'll say bad for him, bad to him. They won't consider him as a good person. But here, the lesson that, alhamdulillah, we are given in Islam, this hadith gives us a lesson, that what you are doing, disliking that person, in reality, why are you disliking that person? Why do you think he's a bad person? You think he's a lower status person? And you dislike him or hate him for this reason, that you are pious and you are practicing? And you think you're better? So inside you, you've got kibar, pride. So when you've got pride, you are worse than that person. In reality, you are lower than that person. You, you are the worst from the people because of your pride. The, the things that the Prophet of Allah has told us to, he's prohibited, don't go near those things. The, if the Prophet said that this woman is a ghayr mahram, she's not permissible for you, don't lift your eyes and look at her. Oh no, no, I'm pious, she's not going to say anything to me, she's like my daughter, she's like my granddaughter, I'm old now. But if the Prophet has made a law, then this means don't be, you, don't be confident and think I'm fine and you break that law. No. No. Today that's what happens in our society. That, Alhamdulillah, we think we're pious, we're practicing, we're religious. And then sometimes we'll watch the TV, we'll watch the screen on our phone, we'll look at pictures, we'll look at adverts, even the adverts. These drag a person because shaitan, he is running through our veins. He knows how to inject us with the poison of this sin. And a person who's worked hard, he's prayed in the path of Allah to become pious, he falls into that trap. Just because he looked the glimpse with his eyes towards the prohibited thing. Allah says, if you are my servant and slave, why are you looking at ghayr mahram? Especially those who say, Allah, Allah, they should lower their eyes. Always keep your gaze down. Don't look around at other things that are not permissible. The, women, the men, the shame for a man is the lowered gaze. And the shame for a woman is her hidden face. Look at the difference. A man, his shame is to lower the gaze. The woman's shame is to hide the face, the glamour. And we walk around lifting our eyes, looking at Gayl Mehram's uh, word. Many meanings of bad come out. He said, the Prophet Wasallam, don't swear to anybody. Don't raise defects in someone. Don't point the defects out from somebody. Don't speak to or call out somebody with bad words. Don't give them a bad title. These are all meanings of, don't say bad to anybody. These are all different meanings of that. Yeah, this is our deen, Islam. Yes, whoever generates this, then he is a wali Allah who practices like this. is You are developing your akhlaq, your conduct, your manners. In Ramadan, this is the condition of fast. That the fast that we're keeping is like um, 
uh, is hanging in the balance there that if you act pr- improperly during the fast then you will break or spoil the fast if you act incorrectly so don't spoil your fast with the bad actions so what's that connection of the fast with our character first what does bad mean bad that don't so the prophet sallallahu said that when you say bad to someone due to his qualities you consider him lower than you you belittle him or you point defects oh he sells alcohol oh he doesn't pray salah oh she does bad actions oh she's uh, not got no shame she's got no modesty this is common in our society lot pointing at people rather more than the quality of that person more than that we look at their defects rather than the good qualities of the human being rather we look at their defects and their sins and we point them and highlight them and for this reason that human being he then comes out of society he detaches himself from society and he goes more towards bad and sin and darkness because he's being criticized so what a great solution that Allah Ta'ala has given to this, that even if it's the most dirty, sinful person, but there'll be one place where no one will think you're bad and you'll be considered good. There'll be a place. There'll only be one place. What is that? The place, the company of the wali Allah. He won't say bad to you. Yes? His eyes will never look at the defects in the person. Look, he'll look at your good qualities, your good attributes. If a person comes dirty, sinful, it's always a precious pearl. If I dust him down, he will sparkle in society. SubhanAllah. Yes, if you go to people in the world, they look at what? They look at his, his sins and his attributes and his think and have confidence on his own actions. He'll never be proud of his own deeds. He'll think himself lower than everyone else. Rather, as a mujaddad, rahimahullah, he stated that I, I am worse than the disbelievers and the zindiq and the fasiks. And if he says that, Mujaddad al afsani the great sheikh, then what's he in reality saying? That's his emotions in reality. Genuinely, he feels that he's saying this. He's being careful. And it's not reality, but he's really also, it's not the reality, but he's saying that my deeds and my feelings and my emotions tell me my, that maybe tomorrow that this person who's worse than me will die in a better way and I will be worse than him. So he couldn't give a guarantee. In reality, he's not saying that the disbeliever is better than me, he doesn't pray and I pray and I'm, I know that the person who doesn't pray is better than me. Do you understand? There's a difference here. There's a difference here. Don't think that the person who doesn't pray Salah, he's better than you or etc. Yes, a person who doesn't practice Islam, he's better. But he's saying it that I am feeling within that Allah, when I die tomorrow, maybe he will be better than me and I will be below him. So there's no guarantee. So for this reason, in my eyesight, my feeling right now that he is kabira and I'm sagira. That Allah Ta'ala, I consider myself, please Allah, lower myself in front of other people. That even the other people who don't believe, they, they, are, they seem higher than me because the real end at the time of death and learn humility, learn how to forgive people and bring respect of other people into your heart. And you'll become a great wali and friend of Allah. But to do, to get this, you have to have the company of the shaykh and do that ibadah to become a true humble person. You can't learn humility from a book. You can't learn from a Dalul Unum. One moment in the company of the Wali Allah, one second in the company of a pious person with a good intention will make you the good human being with humility and humble. With the right knee you should be sitting. No world desire, no desire to earn money, just a desire want to become good. With this intention if you take the hand of a sheikh, immediately that second you become Wali Allah. Immediately that second. Yes, because this is the, the shaykh, he injects the good into you. Even then, you shouldn't be hopeful. You should keep fighting, keep fighting the desires inside you so that the good is maintained. Don't reject the path. No, have courage and determination to practice Alhamdulillah. And then inshallah, you'll graduate. So keep your death and the hereafter in front of you always. That the world that's going to depart and leave you, why are you running after the world? Why are you running after the dunya that's going to leave you to spoil your hereafter? Anyway, going back to that shepherd, he said, oh, he went and sat in front. I'll make you successful. So this is you who breaks that relationship, that contract. The student, oh, I can't do this too hard for me. Let me do this. It's your choice. That we always consider other people better than me and you. And when you degrade yourself in front of others, Alhamdulillah, then your iman will be protected and you'll never think that I'm better than another person. And your iman will be saved. May Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do this. Ameen. Okay, what time is today, Iftari? What is it? 50. Okay, good. Recite the Rusul.